and welcome to Think Tech. I'm Crystal here. Wow, it is almost Christmas. It's the 20th. Five more days. And you know what? I know you guys are all going to be eating lots of sweets, lots of yummy foods. And I don't mean to be a party pooper, but you know, sugar is really bad for you. <laughs> yes, and I hate to say we need to know why the sugars are bad for us, but even more importantly is why we crave it. Why? Why do we want so much of something that's so bad for us? Is this the ultimate challenge for us as human beings on Earth? I don't know, but Christmas is the biggest challenge for this. And why don't we open it up today to have a festive talk on what we shouldn't have too much of, but to celebrate the goodness of everything around us. All right? Okay, so our guest today to talk about sweetness in a natural way is a naturopathic doctor who is good in acupuncture, Chinese medicine, all the stuff that has to do with our body and everything. A reoccurring guest. Yes, you can tell us everyone that I didn't lack. Dr. Diana Ostroff, welcome again. Hi, Crystal. How are you? Great. Thank you Wonderful. for coming again. You're welcome. And today we get to talk about some sweet things. Wonderful. But why is it not such a sweet topic? Well, it can be. So, you know, moderation always is the key. Yes. And um, hopefully if we get to a little bit of time at the end, I'll, I oh, have good. some things that we can do to give us little exercises that we can practice to oh. make it so that we can have a little because deprivation is no fun, no. especially at the holiday times. Yes. But, but knowing the reasons why we would want to maybe not think of it as too much of a different day of the year. I mean, when you think about it, you can go to Safeway any day of the week and pick up whatever you want, you know? So we need to learn how to just c curb the temptation to eat too much. Okay. But there are physiological reasons why we crave it and why we, when, when we eat it, we keep wanting it. When we yeah. see it, we want it. And um, so we can talk about some okay. of those things and maybe it'll help put a perspective because a lot of people think that, well, I know better. I, I should know by now that sugar's not we good for me. We all know it's bad. And I'm so weak and I'm so terrible and I, I messed up again. And yeah. that's, not the, that's not the idea. You know, the reason that I am in the field, as I may have mentioned to you before, and many of my patients know this, is that I had the sweet tooth of all sweet tooths. Okay. And um, I could not control my sweet tooth. My I, mom, too, who's sitting in the audience. <laughs> she said she liked popcorn. She enjoys <laughs> that, too. But her mother was so strict with the uh, candies that she would sneak candy well, and hide it under her pillow at night, and that's like... That's what, right. That's what we did back then. Uh, you know, with us, it was the Chips Ahoy cookies. And right. Who took the cookies and like that is not me. You know? And the more you control, the more somebody's going to try to. Right. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of different things we have to be taking into consideration. Number one, just like any other addiction, when you it is an addiction. Then. It is an addiction. Okay. You hear that? Absolutely. Addiction. It's just, an addiction is something that we do without really any restraint. We just we see it. We want it. We eat it like the seafood diet. <laughs> but um, with sugar, um, what happens is the sugars, the simple sugars that are broken down in the body, simple carbohydrates, they feed a microorganism in the system called Candida albicans. It's a fungus. Uh -huh. And those little fungi, they get that sugar and they say, oh, thank you, mommy. I want more. I want more. They reproduce. They have a party, a festive time, they want more sugar. Now think of it like you have, if you're, um, if you're a mother of 10, okay. and the kids are all crying, mommy, I want sugar, I want sugar, okay. and they're crying, and y you know, they're really not going to be satisfied with a celery stick. Right. So we, we end up feeding that craving, and what happens is that the, we feed it, and then more of the candida albicans will reproduce, and they'll grow, and they'll breed, and they'll have babies and they'll have parties and they want more. And then the, the, the unfortunate news is that these microorganisms, which are live in our systems, mm. they not only do they eat what we feed it, feed them, they eliminate their waste in the body. Oh. And I, re I remember we were talking one time before about the bloating. Yes. So unfortunately, That's again, the candida albicans, they leave their waste in a gaseous form in the body and then there's bloating. So 
So sugar produces gas in a way in sugar your intestines. Sugar will produce gas because it's producing an overgrowth of candida albicans, the mic those little microfungi that live in the body. So what we need to do is we need to replenish and rebalance the gastrointestinal tract. Right. So we in the body, just like in nature, we have good bacteria, we have bad bacteria. So the good bacteria are like the army. The mm -hmm. army is strong and we want to strengthen the army by right. feeding feeding uh, those microbacterium the healthy Do we food. actually kill the bad bacteria? We though? do have to kill the bad bacteria okay. so there we have to strengthen the army mm -hmm. and then we apply a defense. All right. okay. And it has to be specific to the body's needs. It can't just be random. Oh I hear this is good or that is good. We have to really take caution because any substance is has an effect on right. the body. Right. So there's no nothing that's inert, whether it's sugar or whether it's medication right. or whether it's or even herbal medicine has to be dispensed and taken in accordance to what the body I'm needs and what that. and what the body can handle at the time. And individuals, individuals everyone's individualized. Everybody is individual. Last week we had a couple of beautiful farm girls talking about um, the importance of eating organic vegetables and mm -hmm. different types of vegetables. And I asked what types. She says, well, it depends on what you're trying to do. So yes, you can't just have a general statement saying. Okay, well, we know sugar is bad for you, but what are you going to do to get rid of it? So this is why we're breaking it down. Before we break it down, though, can we talk about the big reasons why sugar is so bad for us? You said they create these ugly germs that prove you know, produce gas and all these other horrible consequences. But what, I know there's, it, it causes diabetes, mm. um, obesity, those are the obvious. Um, they say it is also, uh, can lead to cancer and other, well, can you? There's a lot of things that, that will um, be out of balance when there's an overconsumption of sugar. Okay. The liver is involved. Yes. So the body's ability to create um, ATP or energy with our from our food is done in the liver, and there's a um, a dysfunction that will occur with the glycogen, and it's biochemical. So course, alcohol and sugar is like the biggest alcohol horrible Alcohol and sugar combo. is is not so good. Again, <laughs> needs to be done in moderation. Um, the pancreas is is a big. Thing. And in uh -huh. Hawaii especially, there's so much diabetes because everybody loves the potlucks and, yeah. you know, there's so much emphasis around food and eating. So, but our cells also cannot tolerate uh, excessive sugar intakes causes an inflammatory reaction mm, in the yeah. body and all diseases associated with inflammation. But all diseases sugar will feed all diseases. Right. Sugar, yes, and, and because cancer cells uh, grow twice as fast as regular cells, so ex eating sugar can expedite a tumor growth. So oh. there's a lot of reasons wow. that we don't want to consume. And what about teeth? You know, you get rotten teeth for we the most obvious reasons for the well. kids out there yeah, who are so seeking it. We want to make sure that we don't um, overdo it. There's a lot of things that for, for families who haven't already had their children, there's a lot of things that can be done to prevent the, sh the children from having that excessive oh. sh sweet tooth. Okay. It's best if it's done early on. You well, know, that's good. Um, if you, if, if you know, first of all, for parents yes. who are already really attempting to curb their sugar tooth but haven't mastered it yet, mm -hmm. um, just hide the sugar. I mean, there's a theory that little boys, they'll open the fridge uh -huh. and if they don't see it right away, they don't know it's there. So if it's ah. not, if they don't see it, they're not going to eat it. Um, girls, are, it's a little more tricky, so hide it well. <laughs> you know, they'll look. Put it, they'll look more thoroughly, but you can <laughs> put it funny, on it. Yes, you can put it on a shelf that's unreachable. Yeah. or in a cabinet for a while you as the parent is... I don't know, Diana. I've <laughs> tried this trick many years and sometimes I hide them in different places, but they now know to look in different places. Right. They even know well, to look in the you, freezer and in my you. bathroom. Right. And, yeah. they're, they're on to you. Yeah. And um, <laughs> so, but, but the key for all you parents that have not yet had children uh -huh. or expecting mothers, don't bring it in the house. Right? Okay. So you, can we really control people because of that? Can we really prevent it? 
Well, they're going to go outside. They go to school. They eat sugars out there. They do eat sugars out there. But if you begin the process early of not training your children to want the sugar, then they're not going to crave it as much. And I, I've done the research in my own family. Whereas I was so addicted because it was there, and I was ah. restricted from it. Uh -huh. Now in my family, I never introduced sugar, simple sugars. They, the kids loved fruit. What did you do for Halloween when oh. the kids were growing up? Well, it's very funny. It's you didn't cute. Give them a banana, did you? No, we would, we would go out trick or treating, and they would count their candy, and they would I would ask them, well, how many are you going to eat? And they would say one or two. Yeah, sure. And then my little boy was so sweet, he would say, well, I'm going to donate mine to the starving oh. children in Africa. Okay. And I was like, that's beautiful, sweetie. Yeah, you right. know, that was really nice. Um, they're still very able to control it, and they might have their candy in the freezer for up to three, yes. four months. And by then, you'd be like past it. Yeah, they're past Maybe. it, but a few, you know, just to have, learn how to have self-restraint. So can, restricting it completely in your children, that would be a problem because they want what they're not supposed to have. Right. But to give them and ask them, and I also do this with my the patients that are children. I say, let's let's can we can we shoot for one or two pieces this mm. per day this right. week, and then they come back Just and tell me. Slow down they the come back and tell me. I yes, I had two pieces a day, or they'll can you they'll stop brag there? and they and, and then they maybe had one, or maybe they say they had three, but they're working their way down from say okay. ten. You know. All right. So you so can we really, count them. And we discuss actually... it. We discuss it while I'm working on balancing their internal system right. and giving them certain herbal medicines to ah. help control the cravings. Oh. That's a really good. Oh. If you don't herbal crave medicines the to sugar, control the craving, right? You're not going to be as tempted to eat it if you're not craving it. So okay. we want to do this whatever we can do in the system to prevent the cravings and to create a discipline, a natural discipline within the body. Okay, wait. Before you talk about these herbal medicines and all the wonderful things that can balance and take away the craving, we're talking about kids here, but there are many adults, some grown men in our room, our um, mm -hmm. Ian in our in our producer's room, saying he can't stop eating lemon meringue pie. So, you know, adults who think they have control over their lives and their diets, what do you do for these people? You can't say, uh uh, uh did you have only two today? You know. No, but we, you can, you know, if people have to want it. It's just like quitting smoking. You have to be ready. Okay. You know, so a plan can be set up. And again, there's no black or white. There has to be some gray area. There has to be an allowance. And I think once we understand that it's not a weakness. I mean, I was really smart. I went to 12 years. I was all the way through, through medical school, and I still had the cravings. And I still had the sweet tooth. It wasn't until I optimally balanced my body and that takes a process so mm. please don't think of yourself as weak okay. or st or not smart enough to get it together it takes a rebalance of the body it, that's crucial that's a crucial step because just trying to will away the sweet tooth there are, <laughs> you can do it you can do it. You can do it you by going to more to fruits. Right. You can eat more proteins or plant proteins, things that are going to satiate your hunger. Mm, you know, right. even even a, but that's a complex. education. You need to be knowledge on what to be you can do. You need to be educated. You need to just have some uh, action steps. But so, do you think it's a genetic sometimes? Because some people just tend to eat more sweets than others. I think even the, there, it could be genetic, but I think even genetics is uh, something that we can control. So saying that, well, my father was that way, my mother was that way, my grandmother's that way, and my aunties are that way, that doesn't give us the green light to right. be that way. Right. We have to, at some point, make a decision how we want to be and then how we want to raise the generations sure. to come. It takes some willpower. Mm. It takes some readjustment in the system. Yeah. It takes some behavioral things and it takes really acknowledging where you are right now and accepting this is where I am right now. But I think also it depends on the generation at the time. For example, maybe my grandparents didn't eat any sugars because 
there was no sugar to eat. That's right. So in the last 200 years, with all the grocery stores and all the, the processed food, all the processed food has caused this overconsumption of things. Absolutely. And also then with people who don't have time or use that as a, a reason why mm. they don't have time to create healthy meals or have time to, you know, shop in a place where their children can find. There's, you know, there are healthy sweets. There are transition stuffs. Like I, you know, I sometimes call it, refer to it as the healthy junk food. Oh, we have actually that, those? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can we talk about that after the break? We're going to talk about healthy foods. We're going to talk about um, herbal medicines and how to balance uh, your body to slowly prevent from the craving or to go away from it. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of very important things to kind of transition your body to know and willpower that we don't need all these junky sweets, but there are some healthy junky ones that Diana is going to tell us about later. So don't go away. We're going to come back and talk about really, really important aspect of how sugar affects our lives and our cravings and whatnot. All right, so we'll be back. How you doing? I'm Gordo the Texar here on Think Tech Hawaii, where we co-host Hibachi Talk, where we talk about technology and bring in all kinds of cool guests. Also, my co-host with me today is Andrew, Andrew the Andrew the Security Guy. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Think Tech Hawaii, and thanks for watching Hibachi Talk. We also have Angus. Have you got a lab? It's Angus. I bring in all kinds of wee things. Oh, look, you see my lips moving. <laughs> <laughs> Back here at Think Tech, I'm Crystal on Quark Talk. We're talking about how we can't control that sugar craving. Now, you know, yesterday, incidentally, this is a very topical issue here. On the New York Times, there's an article about how people are just honing in on this whole sugar craze and that people are complaining that the sugar, the fact that it's bad for you, is unscientific. Huh. You know, so who backs all this crazy uh, report that this is very untested and it's no grounds that you can't trust those reviews saying that sugar is not bad for you? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, apparently they were supported by a lot of companies like Coca-Cola. And I know Jay was drinking a Coke today. Sorry, but it's true. Hershey's, Crafts, all these big companies are backing these kind of protests, if you will, that sugar is not necessarily bad for you. Coming back to Dr. Ostroff talking about the naturalistic aspect of why and what sugar does. I mean, it's proven what sugar does to our bodies. And yet people are still saying, oh, no, it's really, uh, you can't trust all those studies. What's well, your take on that? I mean, how long was Linus Pauling stating that vitamin C was beneficial for the body and right. people were just ignoring the research? Mm. So there has been research that's been pushed off to the side, um, evidence that having acidity, acidity in the body with sugar when broken down will create an acidic environment in the body as well. And that, pr that will precede conditions that cause degenerative disease such as cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, atherosclerosis, and stroke, and heart disease, all of the diseases. Mm. Now, what about mood disorders, oh. depression? So yeah, how many people sugar. have ever had the experience of eating sugar and then getting depressed? Yes, you or have getting a moment tired. of elation and then you go moment down. Moment of elation. Empty and calories, so, right? Exactly, but it does give the body a little bit of a boost yes. and help the body to feel invigorated. And, you Is know, it the dopamines that it releases? Is it that why? It can release all kinds of uh, neuropeptides okay. in the body, but it is very short-lived. Yes. And there's always, you know, equal in proportion to what goes up must come down. Yes. So in all of life, you know, the higher we go, the, yes. the harder we drop. But why do we always associate sugar with the highs? We rem remember the highs, but we don't really care about the lows. I think when we're young, we don't put those things together. You know, the brain doesn't fully develop till mid twenties. Mm. So to, to be able to correlate that, that's mm. you know, unless Remember a the good kid, stuff. unless a kid is educated, and again, I go back to my kids because yeah. that's who I have the most experience. My little boy once broke out. He got some pimples ah. after he ate some. 
some chocolate. So I said, oh, honey, you might be allergic to chocolate. And the next time we went to a like, little, no. little Hanukkah party, he's like, here, mommy, you can have my chocolate. Oh. I'm allergic. And it was so darling because he understood. Yes. He made the connection. It, but, it, but again, the more we empower our children and help explain the physiological mechanisms that are going on, the more that's going to click in and right. help them to feel empowered about, right. oh, I, I, can, I can make some changes. I got some control here. Yeah, and it's you're pretty right. exciting. And the schools are trying. I mean, my younger son right now in school, they had a whole thing of having to break down the nutrition aspects of everything they ate in every meal for a week. And it was tedious. But you know what? They know. Like, um, he knows to look on labels. Oh, if there's high fructose corn syrup, that's a big no-no. We don't eat that stuff. What is it with high fructose? Can we tell, educate our oh. listeners why that is such a bad one? High fructose corn syrup is very deleterious to the, ar the arterial walls. I can break down the arterial walls of your it, intestines of your of cardiovascular oh, system okay so it can predispose to a lot heart of uh, yes heart wow. disease so that's one that's kind of Kinda. not being paid attention to uh -huh. but the uh, after effect of excessive high fructose corn syrup is dramatic uh, even with the uh, how it affects the brain the neurological mm -hmm. system the frontal lobe so there's a variety of problems associated. It's such a fake food. It's such a non-food substance. The corn that it's made from is genetically modified, uh -huh. obviously. We don't know what's really going on there. And um, so basically chem chemicalized. Oh, and okay. Those then words they, you then said they, already. Then they break, they, there's a breakdown product that happens when they're, when they're creating the high fructose corn syrup. High fructose means really high sugar. Right. And the corn it being genetically modified Already, and mass produced yeah. is a problem. And then syrup, what does syrup imply? Excessive. Oh excessive. God, all right. So, so <laughs> it's, it's, it's in, a and quadruple then, no, no. And then also it's even sweeter than the sweetest of sugars and our bodies get used to having this excessive right. amount of sugar. So going to back to the addiction is that and you have that level, you need to keep that level It's up. almost like the stimulation that goes on when you see one of those video games yes. or something, um, you know, the real Overstimulation. Overstimulation. Yeah, right. Like an action the, film, that's all. Right. right. It's excessive overstimulation to the system. You can't watch a drama. The after pancreas, that. the liver, the Everything's intestines, just the nervous crazy. system. So then the addictions are even stronger. And, you know, obesity now yes. is, is happening starting Still at age again. three. What? Well, that's and that's a lot of it's attributed Sodas. to the high fructose corn. Aren't the they in soda. every soda? Now, what do you think? They've started taxing the sodas, which is a good start, but some kind, some states don't agree, agree on that. So it's a well, start. Well, just like research. Research will be skewed based on who's doing the uh -huh. research. And who's so, backing it. That's right. So if a, an, an, a, the alcohol companies are always going to say wine is good for your heart, wine raises your HDLs, Isn't it? which it does, <laughs> but okay. they don't mention what it does to your brain cells or your liver cells. Same with sugar. So the companies that are producing a lot of sugary products, and you know nowadays there's even caffeine's being put in simple uh, sweetened cereals for children. Why? Uh, contributing to the ADHD. Oh no, that's the hyperactivity right. in kids. So reading reading labels and really getting to know what are all those chemicals in there. If right. you can't understand what the word is, if Don't. you can't if you can't pronounce the word, if you have that's never seen that word, to... you might want to think twice about cons consuming that's that. That's a food. great tip that, that Diana. But what about all the different little aspects of alternative substitute sugars you know for a oh, time th it's like oh you can use that too. those are bad yeah. in different ways right well again it's chemical so making something that tastes sweet and is is makes it an artificial product artificial products are 100 percent of the time made out of chemicals mm. so we don't we don't naturally have receptor sites for chemicals in our bodies, but what our body will do is it'll, it'll graciously create a little receptor site. But that receptor site takes the form of, say, a, a free, free radicalized cell. So basically, one, one uh, electron is knocked off of a cell to create a space for 
something that's artificial in the body. That causes damage to the cells and damage to the organs and damage to the glands. And these are long-term effects that you don't see these in your long -term. immediate future. And so then that's why I'm very busy in my practice is because people have to come for, let's repair this now, time right. to repair. But you know, when it gets bad enough and people are ready to make a change and people are ready to address the situations that they've created over the years, unknowingly, innocently, um, then we, there's a lot of work to be done. And But it is doable, and the, the result of taking care of your body with the guided assistance of someone that's knowledgeable mm -hmm. of how to create optimal health even when a body is compromised or broken down. It is a systematic science. It takes effort, it takes time, and it's doable. And but do uh, you think it's it's doable, but there's much more work and much more effort and much more knowledge that we need in order to do it because there's more processed food now. And it, you know, it's so contradicting because on one hand, the whole world is going for processed food and all these chemically induced uh, products. On the other hand, we've got this whole movement of organic foods and organic organic sugars like agave replacing coconut sugars. So how do you find that balance is so extreme? Well, you make a choice. Is you it that black and white? Or do you, you it, find a way to kind of... You push? can mix it, you can match it, you can do it in gradual steps, yeah, whatever way you feel is going to work for you. Every family's different, every person is different. So just finding, thinking about what would work for me and how do I get the support I need from my family, from my extended family, in within my small circle of even work, mm -hmm. work um, colleagues, is that you want you want the support, but yet we can't rely on the people around us to make sure that we do a good job. Right. It has to be a personal thing. But when when one starts to feel the benefit, yes. when one starts to notice, oh, my it's stomach's true. flat. Yeah. Oh, I don't feel as tired. Oh, I don't have that headache again in the oh, afternoon. So I don't need don't as much coffee. All could be sugar. And, you know, I, I'm losing weight or whatever it is that's m making them uncomfortable now. When those things start to improve, yeah. people get motivated. And but do you think women in particular have a deeper craving for sugars than men, would you say, and I, why? I think that because a woman has a monthly Yeah, you know, I was going to say, cycle, that's when you usually crave the sweets, right? It, it, there is some emotional element to eating. I think probably the large portion of people have emotional attachment to food and eat when they're under stress and eat mm -hmm. when they're sad, eat when they're lonely, eat when they're depressed. Mm -hmm. Whether or not it's women, it possibly is. Men have different ways of dealing with their things. Smoking, they might go drinking. out for a tent, maybe, watching a game, maybe mm. going out for a long bike ride. Every man is different. True. Every woman is different. True. But, but we all have our cravings and vices, do. don't we? And, and uh, everybody's uh, working, trying to figure out the best way to go. Yeah. But again, it's a false sense of uh, high. We were talking about that, that empty calorie. So in our last uh, couple of minutes, maybe we can talk about how we can replace those yucky sugars with some better choices. But before we do that, I'm just curious, Christmas time, you know, I'm about to make more cookies and I bought these sugars and I look at the counter and it's like, oh no, do I have to use white sugar in this ingredient? Are there alternatives? If you use uh, brown sugar, it doesn't come out the same when you make per perfect cookies, you know, Christmas yeah. cookies. What do you well, think? what I did when my kids were little, I would get all organic ingredients. I would get um, agave nectar or the, um, I would use, I, I make a beautiful cranberry sauce for Thanksgiving. I put all kinds of dried fruit in it. Yeah. Uh, fresh fruit makes it so okay. sweet. I never have to add sugar. And you can make it the chocolate, or well, chocolate chips is a little bit difficult, but like mm. oatmeal cookies with raisins and yeah. cinnamon and, yeah. you know, there's like all there kinds of choices. Ways. There's all kinds of things that you can can do using foods from the earth, natural food. So it give us that list of natural foods that you think our audience would love to take away and having a healthy attitude towards the Christmas sweets it, this year. You know, even if you make a, a little bit more effort, have a piece of dried fruit or a dried apricot, a dried 
big or dried date and it's very sweet. Um, mm. And then you might even, if it's not satisfying, put a little almond butter on it, put a little sesame tahini on it, um, sunflower seed butter, even peanut oh. butter. And it gives it a really nice sweet, salty taste. So uh -huh. it could be just as good as the Reese's peanut butter. Do you butter have cup. a website that people can go on for I their do. information? Uh, our website is naturalhealinghawaii.com. We also have one weightlossinhawaii.com. We assist people all the time Great. in the restoration of physiological uh, conditions such Great. as obesity and sugar okay. cravings. There you go. Sugar cravings. We'll wrap it at that. Uh, Dr. Ostroff, thank you so much for all your information and wealth of knowledge. And please uh, listen to your bodies and enjoy the Christmas, but in a healthy way. So thank you so much. Merry Christmas to everyone. And thank you for having me. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.